The Adventures of Frank Race, starring Tom Collins. <laughs> changed many things, the face of the earth and the people on it. Before the war, Frank Race worked as an attorney, but he traded his law books for the cloak and dagger of the OSS. And when it was over, his former life was over too. Adventure had become his business. The Adventures of Frank Race. Join Frank Race for the adventure of the vanishing favorite. Nothing can buy as much excitement as a two-dollar bill. Anybody addicted to the sport of kings can tell you that. It was a soft, balmy afternoon, and I was lined up at the other balmy two-dollar betters at one of the mutual windows of my favorite race course on Long Island. Intent on wagering a deuce in my 40-to-1 shot selection that he could beat nine other two-year-olds to the wire in the opening gallop of five furlongs. Right! Hey, Frank! <coughs> Wait a minute! Oh. oh, brother, what a mile. Oh. I thought you weren't going to bet on the first, Mark. And I still ain't. Anybody which would bet on two-year-olds must be off of his stick. I can down to find you. Why don't you wait by the finish line where I left you? Think I wouldn't come back? Well, maybe I should have said I was sent down to find you. There's a guy in a clubhouse wants to see us. <laughs> He wants we should sit in his box with him. Seats in this crowd? Yeah. Mark, you're a man of miracles. <laughs> Who is the benevolent gentleman? His name is... Uh, uh, wait a minute, wait. It's right here on the pass as he give me for the box. Uh, Robert J. Sherwood. What? He's the racing secretary. Ah, nah, he ain't no secretary. He's a big shot. You ought to see the ushers clear a path for him. And uh, speaking of pass, he wants you to beat one to him pronto. All right, uh, Mark. <laughs> Thanks for the offer of a seat, Mr. Sherwood. We've met before, haven't we? Yes, Race, we have. Some securities were once stolen from me. You recovered them for me through my insurance company. Oh, that's right, I'd forgotten. Now, I don't mean this to sound ungracious, but when I saw your companion, Mr. Donovan, in the crowd, I asked him to bring you up here. My reasons are not entirely social. Lose some more securities? No, but uh, I do have a certain responsibility that might lead to problems. This time, I want to take precautions in advance. A personal matter? Yes, in a way. It also involves this track. It might involve the future of horse racing in this country. Mm, sounds big. But it also sounds rather vague. I'll try to be more specific, Race. Uh, do you particularly care about seeing the second? Or... No, I took too much of a loss on Lady Borgia in the first. In a roundabout way. Good, good. Come back to the stables with me. I'll show you the root of my trouble. We went up to the neat white stables behind the track. The root of Sherwood's trouble, as he called it, turned out to be a jet black colt with a hide that glistened like satin. Needed only one look to tell me that this was no ordinary oat burner. He stood a good 17 hands high, and when he shifted his weight, muscles rippled. And the look in his eye that spelled his champion. Holy smokes, what is this citation? No, his name is Flame of Athens. The Wonder Horse from Greece? But I thought he was shipped to Santa Rosita. No, Race, that story was false. It was given out to the sports commentators for a reason. The reason being you don't want anybody to know that the horse is here. Why? Because several attempts have been made to kill him. It takes somebody pretty low on the rung of humanity to want to harm an animal like this. Oh, you're really a piece of horse flesh, aren't you, boy? Race, I'm stumped. I don't know who wants to get rid of the animal. It could be too many people with too many motives. What do you want me to do? I want you to be responsible for the safety of the horse until he's flown out to Santa Rosita track next week for the match meeting with Galway King. Oh, that's a lot of my line, shall we? <laughs> this looks more like a job for a large babysitter. Well, you'll find it isn't so simple if you take the assignment. I need your help, Race. I can see that you love a thoroughbred. So do I. I also love the sport. 
But if it's going to exist, it must be kept clean. What do you figure might be trying to muddy it up? There's been a lot of betting on the match between Flame of Athens and Galway King. Originally, Galway King was a heavy favorite because he's beaten almost everything over here. People figured a foreign horse doesn't have a chance against him. But the betting switch? Yes. Yes, a lot of money showed for this horse all over the country. Now he's the heavy favorite. It's only one to three. Odds on. Mm. A lot of bookmakers gave bigger odds in the beginning, though. They stand to be wiped out if he wins. Then you figure that the bookmakers are the heavies in this. For the sake of the sport, that's what I'd like to figure. But there are other possibilities? Yes. It's the owners of the horses. They have a side bet. Even money. Horse for horse. How big is the bet? Half a million dollars. Holy cow. You mean there really is that much cabbage in the world? Both owners are wealthy men. Galway King is fourth on the list of all-time money winners. And Flame of Athens beat everything in Europe before he was shipped over here. Both owners and all the bookmakers in the country. Mm -hmm. It's quite a best to keep tabs on. You, uh, you take the job then, Race? Yeah. I'll take it. Good. And as a bonus, I'll give you one more suspect. The jockey who was slated to ride Flame of Athens, Georgie Clements. He's been removed from the mount. <laughs> that makes bingo race. The only ones we don't have to watch is each other. That's a frank thing to lose me to a horse. Hey, race. Race! Race! You awake? Yeah, the answer is yes. Since you twisted my arm. Uh, I can't sleep on this cut. I feel like I'm back in the army. Keep dreaming of that sergeant who always put me on KP. I'd peel four barrels of potatoes since the first time I closed my eyes. No, I'll go back to sleep. I can't. If I do any more work on my sleep, I'll be too tired to wake up. Quiet, Mark. Huh? What is it? Somebody else hiding. The nocturnal prowler stood framed in the doorway. There was no moon outside, but whatever dim light there was, cast a blurred shadow into the stall. My cot was next to the outside wall. I gathered my knees under me and made a lunge. That's it. Get him, Race. Yeah. Turn on the flashlight, Mark. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh-oh. Oh, I was right. No wonder one punch was enough. It's a girl. Yeah. And the honey. <laughs> Hope you haven't put her out of commission for good. Kids like this make the world nicer to look at. Yeah, she'll come around in a minute. Get some water in a towel, will you? Yeah. Come on, wake up. Wake up. Uh, it's a funny thing. I get to wake you up, but you get to wake her up. Am I always going to be water boy in this thing? <laughs> uh, I wasn't talking to you, wise guy. Come on, you beautiful thing. Wake uh, up. Uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, try to sit up. What happened to me? Uh, I introduced myself rather crudely. Hangover from ancestors who lived in caves. Oh, why did you hit me with a club? I'm sorry. Truly sorry. Well, you needn't be. I think my father would approve of you. He might even give you a reward. I take it that he regrets not using the hairbrush when you were younger. But before we get into that, who is Daddy? Oh, you mean, who am I? No, I was trying to be more subtle. Oh, from the way my jaw feels, it's too late for subtlety. Don't tell me you don't recognize me. I'm beginning to. Magazine covers, no? Magazine covers, yes. A poor little rich girl turned model. You're leader of Galway, aren't you? That's right. And by whom have I had the pleasure of being knocked unconscious? The name is Frank Race. <laughs> That's a nice name. But you say it as though you don't like it. I was thinking of something. You're Richard Galway's daughter. Your father owns Galway King. Yeah, that's right, again. You should go on information, please. What were you doing around here? I like horses. Runs in the family. Yes, honey child, but there's only one horse in this stable area. Flame of Athens. Yes, I know. I wanted to see him. In the middle of the night. With a match mini coming up. And a half million dollar bet on the side. Well, wouldn't that make me interested in the horse? Oh, yes, definitely. I see you even went to the trouble of... Uh, Bringing him an apple. Oh, it's a good way to make friends. With horses or school teachers. 
Well, I know why you were kicked out of so many colleges. You looked undernourished. Why don't you uh, eat the apple yourself? Why should I? Oh, I see, Mr. Race. <laughs> you must read detective stories. Well, just to show you how wrong you are. She ate the apple, grinning at me at each bite. Even in the cold glare of the flashlight market placed on the feed box, her face had a special kind of beauty. The boys that grow up with a yen to marry the boss's daughter um, always hoped the daughter would look like this. Convinced, Race? Completely. In the Garden of Eden, wasn't it Adam who ate the apple? Yes, he um, also lived to regret it. But this one wasn't poisoned. You just thought it was. Maybe I'm not as poisonous as you think. Oh, do some research on it. Someday when I have some spare time. Do you know you're the first man who ever hit me? I said I was sorry. I'm not. Women are strange creatures, aren't they, Race? She leaned toward me. And as she came closer, her face blurred out. Except for that wonderful, smooth mouth. I reached for her, and she didn't resist. For the next ten seconds, I felt like a man going over Niagara Falls in a barrel. That was nice. I may have been the first man who ever hit you, but... I can see you haven't been neglected in other ways. Make sure you don't neglect me from now on, Race. How about walking me back to my car? All right. Mark should be back in a second. I wonder where he went for that water. Stop wondering about other people and uh, concentrate on me. I walked Lita to her car, stopping every once in a while to get the Niagara Falls feeling again. We strolled down the path lined with trees... And I helped her into her yellow convertible. She was gone. It was then that the weight of responsibility pressed on my mind again. And I planned a straight line shortcut through the brush to get back to the stables again. Hurrying someplace? Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm the inquiring photographer. You just asked the question for the day. Why don't you try answering it first? I can't see very well. That's not a camera you're holding. No, it's a Smith & Wesson. It goes bang. It makes holes and things. Now sit down on that stump over there and keep me company for a while. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to refuse that invitation. It's not an invitation. It's an order. And you'll use the gun to enforce it? Do I look like the type would make casual conversation? No. It'd make it rather silly for me to try passing it, wouldn't it? Very silly. Which leaves two other alternatives. To sit down and visit or... Take that gun! <laughs> oh, my eyes! I'm letting you off easy this time. I don't know how long I lay there after he hit me with the gun, but... shot had been fired along the side of my face. The flash had blinded me temporarily. When I came to, my eyes were still smarting. I seemed to be seeing red. Everything was tinted with color, even in the night. But then I smelled smoke and I jumped up. The glow came from the stables. They were on fire. We'll return to the adventures of Frank Race in just about one minute. to the adventures of Frank Race. By the time I reached the stables, the place resembled Dandy's Inferno. Whoever had named the horse Flame of Athens must have had a premonition of things to come. Nothing in that row of stalls could have been saved. Swipes and grooms and other track personnel had formed a bucket brigade to keep the fire from spreading to another line of stalls. There was nothing to do but join them. Mark, what happened to you? Shh, tell you later. Come oh, on, that poor animal. I bungled this one, Mark. <laughs> For a brilliant guy like me, help on you all your worries are imaginary. <laughs> you mean the horse is all right? If it comes to red wagons. If you get out of here, and I will show him. Well, if you got that horse out, you shouldn't have left him. If I left him, nobody will be looking. He's in the stalls with the white horse. Oh, oh, nice work, Mark. That's good cover. And not only that, but I have spotted a place where they rent trailers. I thought you and me and a horse might go camping for the weekend. 
A very excellent suggestion. Oh, brother. I've hauled many strange characters around in my cab race, but this is the first time I have ever played chauffeur to a horse. I'd better find some side road soon and get off the highway. Look at this headline in the paper I picked up at our last coffee stop. Mm. Match meet favorite vanishes in stable fire. The state police may have been alerted. They know the horse didn't perish in the fire. Uh, if he did, it's an awful live ghost back there in the trailer. He almost kicked the sides out of that thing. I'm going to send a couple of wires as soon as possible. Oh, shall we? Yeah. Let him know the horse is safe. Oh. We can take him to some isolated training farm. Trainer can come down and get him in shape for the match. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's a side road, which looks promising. And there's a town up ahead. Uh, we'll camp in here. Then you can walk the town and get the messages off. No, oh, there's a spot in that grove of trees. It's not far from the main road, but it's hidden. Yeah, look. A little fun. Good. There's drinking water for our equine passenger. It sort of resembles the old swimming hole. Now, <laughs> well, let's take a dip and freshen up, huh? Okay. Last one in is a mutton head. It seemed like a good idea, but it wasn't. When you're a kid with nothing in your mind, the old swimming hole can be fun. But when you're growing up and the responsibility for a couple of fortunes riding with him, the fun gets washed out along with everything else. I left Mark still splashing exuberantly and dressed, went back to the trailer. I'll put down the ramp, boy. Then you can come out and move around a little. I don't mind if the horse moves, but don't you move. It was the man from the night before. I hadn't seen his face until now. That voice was unmistakable. Another thing that was unmistakable was the gun in his hand. He carried it as though it were standard equipment. Hugo! Yes, eh? Take care of the other fish down at the pond. That's a little early in the day for violence, isn't it? It's also too late to turn philosopher. Don't worry about Hugo. He's gentle. As the girl's father might say, what are your intentions? I'm just going to tie you two jokers back to back and relieve you of this horse. I don't think so. Would you like to make a bet? With you acting as bookmaker? That's my business. Your companion called you Sam. That could mean big Sam Evans. Not only could, it does. And a lot of people have bet a lot of money with you that Flame of Athens could beat Gullery King. He won't. Maybe not. But I'm going to see that he gets a chance to try. You tried this last night, remember? Yes, but I forgot... I forgot to do this. I slipped down with the pond. Hugo also had a gun and it was trained on Mark as he slipped into his clothes. I picked up a stone and a heavy piece of dead wood. I tossed the stone into the pond. And as Hugo turned, I let him have the business end of the club, right behind the ear. <laughs> nice work, Grace. Come on, Mark, let's get out of here. going to be a match meet at Santa Rosita Park. It seemed like a good idea to get Flame of Athens out there. Well, I sent my wire to Sherwood, and he arranged for a plane to pick us up at a small airport off the beaten track. We loaded Flame of Athens on board and headed for California. We took him off the plane at another small airport, and under cover of darkness, slipped him into a stall near the training track. You uh, think we're giving him the shake, race? Well, there's one thing we're sure of. The plane wasn't following. Yeah, that makes sense. It also means we should not be running into no trouble for a while. So, uh, <laughs> maybe I could take a little time off. Huh? To do what? Well, there is a girl who slings hash at the drive-in across the road in the San Rosita track. Mm. Her name is Ramona. Ramona Glutz. <laughs> oh, what a doll, what a doll. I met her out here once before. With a name like that, she must be unforgettable. All right, run along. <laughs> Won't be going long, Rach. Don't be lost. Yeah, I'll try not to mind. And uh, I'll try to help you. Well, you again. What do you do, haunt stables from coast to coast as soon as the sun goes down? Aren't you going to uh, slug me again? Still carrying peace offerings, I see. Oh, you mean the apple? The horse missed out on a treat last time because you were so suspicious. I can give him this one, can I? You're afraid not, honey child. Just a precaution. Race, can you think of any reason why I might want to harm Flame of Athens? To save your daddy a half million dollars. Oh, well, that wouldn't be necessary, Race. You could simply say that Galway King is not in condition and cancel the match. You mean there's no forfeit? That's right. No match, no bet. Then that eliminates your father as a suspect. But not you. What do you mean, Race? Big Sam Evans, the bookmaker. You know him, don't you? I've met him. 
once or twice. He was also out at the track with you that night the stables were burned. That's not true, Ray. Oh, yes, it is, Ducky. Because there was only one car at the gate to that area. Your convertible. And he was there after you left. How did he get away, then? Simple. You drove up the road a bit, waited for him. Because Mark Donovan saw your car outside the fence when he was finding a safe place for Flame. I, uh... I used to think I was in love with Big Sam. What changed your mind? You did, Ray. I didn't believe her. But you can forget about your beliefs when you hold a woman like that in your arms. She was all the things that bad men promise a woman she'll be when they put a little perfume on the market. I don't know how long we stood there. It must have been a long time because... Hey! Hey, look it! A romantic couple. <coughs> <laughs> Hello, Ray. Hello, Mark. You know Miss Goldman? Yeah, but we wasn't introduced the last time because she was unconscious. And this lovely creature with you, I take it, is Romana Plaza. Yeah. Hey, listen to him. Why don't you ever say things like that? Quiet. Uh, Ramona told me a couple of things I figure you ought to know, Ray. Uh, about that Georgie Clements, the jockey that gave the boat. Hmm. The boy who was slated to ride the flame. What about him, Ramona? Oh, it, it ain't nothing much. But he used to eat at my place a lot, see, and I heard him talking about the match a couple times. Well, that's been a popular subject wherever horsemen gather. Yeah, Race, yeah, but this kid was all set to lose. You mean he was going to pull a horse? I don't mean nothing else but. Tell him, Bill. Well, that's why the odds on the horse were so high at first, Mr. Race. Mm. The bookies all thought that Galway King was a sure thing, see? Mm. So Georgie bet against his own horse. But then when they took him off the horse, that's when the odds dropped and they made Flame of Athens the favorite. Hey, yeah, you see, Race? That puts it right in the lap of the books. The trouble started right after. No, Mark. That eliminates the bookmakers. They have nothing to do with it. What do you mean? Mark, if the race doesn't take place, all bets have to be refunded. So if that's what they want, ain't it? Then they wouldn't have to pay off. No, they would have stopped the bets altogether. They're taking the odds, but they're gambling on a match. And they're gambling to win. If they tried to do anything to the horse, they'd, they'd have tried it just before the match. Not to kill him, but just to make him lose. Hey, that's right, yeah. Oh, tell me something, Lita, and don't stall, Ducky. Why was Big Sam out of the track that night? He said he wanted to get the horse away where he could watch it, keep it safe. But you didn't believe that? No, Race. You should have, baby. He was telling the truth. What? You mean that gorilla Hugo was also playing guardian angel to the horse? As innocent as a babe, Mark. I know the answer now. We can wind this up tonight if Ramona will help us. Oh, gee, I'd do anything to help you, Mr. Race. Good. Mark will uh, take you back to work. Yeah, but I'm off duty until tomorrow. You get back on duty. And just drop the word that Flame of Athens is stable here. Let it circulate. Not only that, but give out that the horse is alone and will be until his trainer gets here tomorrow. You ain't gonna leave him, Race. No, I'll, I'll be right here. And I'll be expecting a visitor. No, quiet, boy. Quiet. Hold on. Hold on. Come on, boy. Come on, Flame. All right. Don't move. Hey, hey, does that flashlight? You're blinding me. Who are you? Just an exercise boy. I thought I heard a noise. You're Georgie Clements. All right, so I'm Georgie Clements. Is that a crime? No, but arson is. You wanted for burning down some stables back east. And for murder. Murder? It was a lie. A long shot, but I played it. I had to sell him a parcel of fear and hope it would break him down. And there was no horses in that stable race. You got flame out. And even if you didn't, killing a horse isn't murder. There was a tramp sleeping in one of those stores, Georgie. He was badly burned. He died this morning. Hey, you, you can't pin that fire on me. Yes, I can, Georgie. I saw you. You saw me? I was the only witness. Well, that's only good if you can testify. But you ain't gonna testify, race! The powerful little man. His lunch threw me back. It was all muscles and shoulders. I could have handled him, but the horse was fractious. He kicked me at me as I slipped, and his kick caught me in the small of the back. For a minute, I couldn't move. Now, Race, I'm going to finish you off with this rod, and then I'll take care of the horse. I'm afraid somebody's going to catch up to you, Georgie. Come on, you go. Hey, stay where you are, you guys. Oh, you punk, stay low, Race. Oh, oh, easy, easy. Ah, nice going, Race. Well, nice going yourself. 
Saved my life. Well, this horse is safe now, and that means you stand to lose a fortune. Or win one, Race. I like to gamble. You must think Gulliver King can take the flame. I don't know, Race. Maybe yes, maybe no. All I know is the King is one of our own horses. He's beaten everything but citation. I still think he can knock off a horse from across the seas, even Flame of Athens. You know, Sam, we had a lot of guys like you in the Battle of the Bulge. They weren't favorites either. Yeah, I know, Race. I was one of them. I still like the home team, win, lose, or draw, odds or no odds, as long as the contest is on the level. Well, I've taken care of this horse as far as I could. Now I've got a piece of business to attend to. Oh, it's sad. Well, I'm going to take a tip from a nice guy. From you. I'm going to bet that Galway King beats his ears off on that track Saturday. <laughs> Adventures of Frank Race, starring Tom Collins, with Tony Barrett as Mark Donovan, comes to you from Hollywood. Others heard in tonight's cast were Peggy Knudsen, Florence Halep, Ted Von Eltz, Frank Lovejoy, and Bert Holland. This series is written and directed by Buckley Angel and Joel Murcott. The music is composed and played by Ivan Dittmars. Be sure to be with us again this same time next week for another dramatic chapter in The Adventures of Frank Race. Art Gilmore speaking. This is a Bruce Ells production. <laughs>